Did you find Frosthaven under the tree this holiday and you're not sure if you want to keep it? Or maybe you have gift cards to the local game store burning a hole in your pocket and you're just not sure if it's worth the investment? Is it just more Gloomhaven or is it legitimately a better game? Well, in this video, I'll go over my top five improvements in Frosthaven over Gloomhaven and hopefully help you make that decision yourself. We'll get to number five after the break. Number five on my list is the rule book and rules reveal. Gloomhaven the game is a monster. I had never seen a box like this. I know there have been other games this large, but me personally, I'd never seen a game this massive before. There's so much stuff in that box too. All the different locked characters, all the different tiles and cards and pieces and bits and doodads. It's kind of insane and it's awfully intimidating. There's a lot to learn about Gloomhaven to get off the ground. Think of all the things that you need to learn to get into the game. You need to understand initiative. You need to understand top actions, bottom actions. You need to understand elements. You need to understand monster movement. Oh my gosh, monster movement. That alone is massive. You need a PhD to figure that stuff out part of the time. There's message boards that are overwhelmed daily with all the questions about monster movement and its intricacies. It's tough. So there was an awful lot of stuff to cram into that rule book and cram it in they did. Is it the most organized rule book in the world? No, not by far. Just look at that table of contents. I mean, they're trying to help you. There's a lot of stuff there. There's this huge, massive whole page worth of a table of contents, but none of it means anything to you when you first open it up. And it just, it doesn't really give you a good in to the game and understanding how to play it. Now, they certainly improved this with Jaws of the Lion later, and I think that they've improved again greatly with Frosthaven. The Frosthaven rulebook itself is much bigger this time around, and it's much, much better organized. The way they built the rulebook out is it does have all the information, because there are people who have maybe never played a Haven game before and need to know all the details. But if you're like me and you're experienced with Gloomhaven, you don't need to read through the whole thing. It does a really great job of highlighting the things you need to know as a returning player, which is great. The organization being better also makes the rulebook much more readable. You can actually sit down and read it cover to cover and get a good sense of how you play the game. No, you won't be a master after reading the rulebook, but you'll be in a much better place than you were after trying to read the Gloomhaven rulebook from the first game. Lastly, I want to talk about how they reveal new rules in Frosthaven. Now, in Gloomhaven, they dump basically everything on you. All the, all the mechanics were laid out from the very start. All the mechanics, all the rules, save for one thing. That was the enhancement of your cards, and that didn't come until later in the campaign. In Frosthaven, there are also newer rules that are revealed over time, but the way they handle them is much better. What you'll see as you go through the rule book is there will be blank spots that say sticker one, sticker three, sticker five, different things within them. And these represent different things that you will add over the course of the campaign to the rules and mechanics of Frosthaven. These new rules and mechanics don't come in order from one through whatever it is. They just come based on your retirements and what you unlock through the different unlockable elements within Frosthaven. All in all, the way they reveal rules and the rulebook itself are a great improvement over what you got in the original game. Number four is story. You can't have a good dungeon crawler without having a good story. Gloomhaven did a lot of good things when it comes to story. It was its own brand new world, for instance. They didn't just rehash something that you've already seen. There were no elves here to speak. There were no dwarves. They had their own races, their own cultures, uh, their own town, their own sort of setting, which all, all that stuff was very good. There were interesting story elements that happened within the context of Gloomhaven. You did get to make some decisions that affected the story, and there were a lot of scenarios with a lot of text in them that had a lot of different things going on. And that's not even getting into things like the road events and the city events. There's definitely a lot of story crammed into that box. So did all that equal a good story? I would say kind of not. It was an okay story. It wasn't what kept me coming back to the game, that's for sure. It was the mechanics, the classes, all the other things about Gloomhaven that kept me there. But the story did make some attempts and it just fell short in some ways. For instance, there was a real disconnected feel to the different scenarios in the way that they linked together. At the end of most scenarios in Gloomhaven, you would unlock one or more additional scenarios. 
Some of them were direct links to the scenario that you were on from a story perspective. Some of them were complete offshoots, and you kind of didn't really have a good sense of which was which. I never really felt compelled to go down a certain path and keep going down that path, for instance. And even if I did, I didn't feel like the game did a great job of keeping me on the path that I wanted to be on. It just made everything a little bit scattered in the way that it was presented. It was more like a big collection of scenarios rather than a cohesive storyline. And this even translated in the very end game, if you ever got there with Gloomhaven. It was sort of a big letdown. You did all this work, all these different scenarios to finally unlock your final confrontation with the big boss in Gloomhaven. And it really came up kind of limp and kind of boring. Uh, the scenario itself wasn't that great. The story behind the scenario wasn't that great. It just didn't all marry together, I think, in the way that they hoped that it would. The good news is that story in Frosthaven is vastly, vastly improved. I'll start by talking about storylines, which I think is important. What I mentioned before about Gloomhaven is it felt really scattered. You didn't really know what direction things were going. The good thing about Frosthaven is they include a scenario flowchart that sort of tells you what is going on, how different scenarios are connected, and why they're connected that way. Everything's color-coded, so you know what is a sort of part of one storyline quest line and what is a separate storyline quest line. It really helps to know, okay, I'm enjoying this Elgok story. I want to keep going down this route, so I just need to make sure I pick this scenario next. That alone is a huge improvement over how it worked in Gloomhaven. But it's not just about the connectedness. It's the story itself that is vastly improved. The world just feels more living and breathing than it did before. It feels like there's real people in there. It feels like there's real consequences. There's real conflicts. There's different factions of people. They have different views on the way that things should go, just like it is in the real world. The story itself, at its core, is just much better laid out. And all the different texts within the context of scenarios is just also more rich and more interesting. And maybe the best part is it goes well beyond just the story within scenarios. You have road events, just like you had in Gloomhaven. You also have outpost events, which are basically this game's version of city events. And there's just much more rich story in those as well. The story in those ties in more directly with the main story. A lot of times in Gloomhaven road and city events, there are kind of random occurrences that didn't really have anything to do with anything. Will you eat the red berries? Yes or no. Will you shoot the birds? Yes or no. Those kind of things. While in Frosthaven, most of these events actually have pretty interesting story undertones in them. You meet interesting characters. There's interesting decisions you have to make. And the other thing is you'll have a lot more throwbacks to retired characters and things like that. They tried to do some of that in Gloomhaven, but in Frosthaven, they really took it to the next level. When you do retire a character in Frosthaven, expect to hear more about them later as you progress throughout the campaign. Altogether, the scenario story, the event story, the character stories, all these things tie together really nicely in Frosthaven, and it's a huge improvement over Gloomhaven. Coming in at number three, we have the outpost phase. This is the first thing we're talking about that's wholly new to Frosthaven. The rule book and the story, those are both improvements over existing things from the Gloomhaven universe. They just did them a lot better in Frosthaven. With the outpost phase, they've introduced something entirely new compared to what they had before. If you think back to Gloomhaven, what did you do between scenarios when you went to Gloomhaven? The answer is not a whole lot, at least not a whole lot that you really cared about. For all intents and purposes, Gloomhaven in that game was really a cleanup phase, if, if anything. You could contribute money to the Great Oak, and sure, that's where you go to do enhancements, retire characters, do the all typical like management of your characters and your party all happened in Gloomhaven. You'd also have a city event, but as I talked about in the story, those city events were often pretty random and not all that interesting, though there were some that were interesting for sure. But beyond that, you didn't really do a whole lot. It didn't feel like you were in a city and things were happening. It felt more like this is a thing that you had to do before you went to the next scenario. The outpost phase is another example of something that just makes Frosthaven feel more alive than Gloomhaven ever did. The events that happen in the outpost phase are more critical. They feel like they're actually having an impact, and they can actually impact the town itself and how it functions. 
The way that you get to build up the town over time and make choices about what you're going to do and not do as far as upgrading and creating walls and doing other things within the town, all that gives you a lot of agency and a lot of interest in this phase. You get to see a lot of interesting characters that you often only see during the outpost phase. There's like a mayor sort of character. There's other characters that are recurring. They get to hear about their stories throughout the campaign. Again, it's just much more rich than you had in Gloomhaven. Or in Gloomhaven, you had that, hey, stop in the town, do a couple things, and get to the next scenario. In Frosthaven, you're stopping in the town, helping build it up, having an event, seeing what things are going on, maybe contributing in some way, and then thinking about moving on to the next part of your journey. Overall, it's just a vast improvement over what you had in Gloomhaven. For number two on my list of improvements to Frosthaven over Gloomhaven, I want to talk about personal quests and retirements. Uh, I first want to say here that this is one of my favorite aspects of the game. Uh, I love the fact that you do a personal quest, that you eventually retire a character that you've played for a while, you've learned a lot about, and then have the opportunity to play a completely different character. I did also like how this usually unlocked new classes in Gloomhaven. Uh, we'll get to what I think about how that happens in Frosthaven in a little bit here, um, but I like the overall system. I want to make sure that was clear before I started complaining about how it was in Gloomhaven. So about those personal quests in Gloomhaven, there were definitely some problems with the system. Some personal quests were relatively easy, things like kill 20 cultists, or kill a certain number of other creatures that were usually relatively easy to find, or in some cases kill a variety of different creatures that were also relatively easy to find. Those are fine, I, don't, I didn't have any issue with those. The problem is you didn't always get those easy quests. Sometimes you got much more complex quests that you had to complete. One example of this is really the only reason I ever got a character to level 9 in Gloomhaven, because the personal quest just was difficult for me to figure out how to actually get accomplished. The personal quest in this case was called The Fall of Man. It required you to complete, I believe, two scenarios in a zone called The Lingering Swamp. The issue is, and maybe you'll remember this if you played Gloomhaven, there weren't a ton of quests in The Lingering Swamp. It wasn't like some other zones that had many, many quests in them. There were relatively few. I think there were only maybe three base quests in The, in the Lingering Swamp. And at that time, we had already completed a couple of them. And I didn't realize that was going to be a problem when I chose my personal quest, because you might be saying right now, well, why didn't you pick the other one since you got to pick two and choose one? I didn't know. I didn't realize at the time. It was not clear to me. So I chose that one based also on which class I unlocked, to be totally honest. So since we were on a path to try to complete the game, we didn't have any interest in going back and doing scenarios over just so that I could retire a character. And I just never did. So I got that, that character to level nine which is nice that I got a character to level 9, but it wasn't the way that I wanted to do it. Uh, I would have preferred to do it because, you know, that's just how I wanted to play it. And sadly, that's just one example of a poorly designed personal quest from Gloomhaven. Some of the other ones, like there was one, for instance, where you had to find a particular axe from a particular scenario and use that axe to kill a bunch of monsters, which seems reasonable enough. I mean, it's a quest. It sounds like a quest. Hey, go find this axe and kill a bunch of certain types of monsters with it. But what if you're a spell weaver? Or what if you're some other class that isn't a melee attacking class? Which, when I got this as an option at the time, I actually was a spell weaver, so I didn't take this one, obviously. But what if I got two bad choices like that? Because this isn't the only one like that. There are definitely some issues. The other main issue I want to touch on about the personal quests in Gloomhaven is that many of them unlock the same exact class box, and there was no alternative to that. So if it unlocked the Lightning Bolt class box, and you got another two personal quests later that also unlocked the Lightning Bolt class box, which was definitely possible, you really had a personal quest that wasn't doing anything. And yes, it had some really minor, like, unlock a random scenario, some other thing that you could do in Gloomhaven, but it just wasn't enough, and it made it feel like I don't really have a personal quest at this point, which sort of defeats the purpose of the system, in my opinion. And this is why retirements are important here as well. When you complete a personal quest, obviously, that's when you retire. Same for Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, everything else. The issue is in Gloomhaven, what you unlocked most often in retirement was a new class. There were other things you could unlock, like Envelope X or other aspects of the game that were locked, but for the most part it was usually about unlocking new classes, which I always enjoyed. I love unlocking new classes. 
The issue is, what if there was a class that you wanted to unlock, but it was trapped behind somebody's terrible personal quests? You had to maybe house rule it and have them eliminate that quest and choose a different one, or maybe just fudge it in some way. Like, there was no great workaround for it. Thankfully, both personal quests and retirement are vastly improved in Frosthaven. Let's talk first about personal quests. They're still similar at the core. You choose two and you get to pick one of the two for your character at the beginning of your, of your journey with that particular character. Uh, and it can unlock various things. What it unlocks is not clear. Where in Gloomhaven you had a little symbol that you knew, okay, this personal quest is going to unlock this character box. That is not the case in Frosthaven. It's more of a mystery what you unlock, which I think is more exciting. <laughs> because you have no idea what it is you're going to unlock, and that doesn't unduly influence you on which personal quest you're going to take like it might have before. For instance, in Gloomhaven, I might have wanted to unlock that Lightning Bolt class, and if I got a personal quest where one of them was that, I'll be, I'm taking that one for sure. I like that it, that it wraps it in mystery this time, which is nice. The other thing, the composition of the personal quests, while they are very similar, there are still quests that are just around like killing certain monster types. There are quests around collecting certain things. What I like about them in Frosthaven is none of them seem ambiguous. They're all pretty clear. One example of this is I had my first personal quest was to collect eight lumber with my particular character, meaning I had to loot a lumber loot token within a scenario eight times. That would then unlock a little quest line that I had to do that I then completed to retire my character. I don't want to spoil anything about this personal quest and this quest line either, but they really tied together thematically in a fantastic way that I didn't expect. Um, I'll just leave it at that, uh, but I was very pleased with the way that that ended up. And it ended up being a very... The way that character retired doing this and completing this quest just felt more triumphant than the way that I had often retired before. It was like, okay, I killed my 20th Vermling, so I now get to retire. Is not as exciting as going into this big quest like I did. So what you do unlock when you complete a personal quest is much more interesting in Frosthaven than it was in Gloomhaven. The primary reason for that is the fact that you don't know what it is you're unlocking and neither does anyone in your party. You're unlocking an envelope that could contain any number of things. Some of them contain, maybe they contain new rules or new quests of some kind or new items or new buildings. Who knows? They can contain just about anything. I don't want to spoil a thing here. But the fact that it's a mystery makes it much more interesting, at least in my opinion. So you might be asking yourself though, then how do you unlock classes? Because that's all I really care about. And I hear you. I love unlocking new classes. It's one of my absolute favorite things in the game of Gloomhaven and Frosthaven. But I will tell you now that that's vastly improved as well. Instead of knowing exactly how you're going to unlock each exact character box like you did in Gloomhaven with your personal quests, in this case you're going to be surprised by that too. They come naturally throughout the campaign, so as you play, classes will naturally become avail available to you in different ways in ways you don't expect. And I'm not going to spoil anything here either, but I will tell you that almost every time there's been a new character unlocked, I was like, this is great, we're unlocking a new character right now just for doing X or doing Y. Like it wasn't something that we expected. Uh, and I love that change because I love unlocking those character boxes and the fact that they come in a more natural or different way and not like go down this path, then you unlock this reward. I like that they're just sort of sprinkled throughout the campaign. It keeps me going and it ties in thematically with the story that I mentioned before as well. So I really love the way that they do all these new systems in Frosthaven. It's much improved over Gloomhaven. Everything's clear. The personal quests are easier to do because they're clear. It's not that there aren't personal quests that take time. They definitely do. But you know exactly what you have to do. You know what it takes to finish it. And then you get to open something at the end that you don't know what it is. And then while you're playing, you just randomly open new classes. I think it all works much better than it did in the previous games. My number one improvement in Frosthaven over Gloomhaven is in character design. So characters in the world of Gloomhaven are everything. They're how you play the game. They're how you experience the game. They're how you get through scenarios. They're my favorite aspect of actually playing Gloomhaven. Most of the things that I talked about earlier are sort of like secondary to the actual gameplay itself because the gameplay revolves around having a particular character with particular abilities and using it to defeat monsters, basically, with, you know, a group of friends. 
I'll start this by saying that I did like the characters and classes in Gloomhaven. There's a lot of variety there, a lot of different types of characters. They all played very differently, and that's one of the most important things to me in this game. I love starting a new class because I didn't know how it would play or how I'd have to learn to play the game differently to, in order to succeed with that new class. Fantastic stuff. I can't complain about that. What I kind of can complain about is the balance was off. As you progress through the campaign and unlock some later classes, you definitely came across classes that were, well, sort of game-breaking. They did things that were vastly overpowered. There was a music note character that could do quite a bit to affect enemies in a very negative way very, very easily. There was another character that could just straight up kill enemies left and right, like not lost, just kill enemies with a repeatable ability. These sort of things just broke certain scenarios and certain aspects of the game. And it's sure it maybe made it fun when you had one of those characters and you could just blow through scenarios, but it ruined the overall experience in the end. Now, outside of class balance and whether some characters were overpowered or in other cases actually a little underpowered, there are also some issues with the perk system. I do enjoy the perk system. It's a key component of Gloomhaven and how you grow and change your character and also how you can make your own decisions about how you want to grow and change your character as you select new perks. But the perks that were on offer in Gloomhaven were kind of limited. They were almost always exclusively focused on your attack modifier deck in ways that you could improve that um, by ch taking out negative cards, adding positive cards, adding other effects and things of that nature. Again, I don't have complaints about that necessarily, but it's just not as good as what you get in Frosthaven. In Frosthaven, you not only get all those different perks to change your attack modifier deck, but they also took the time for each class to develop unique perks for each one that really changed the gameplay of that class. Things that really lean into the things that are important to your class. For instance, with the Banner Spear, which you can see in my Banner Spear overview that I have on my, on my channel. I actually have a couple different versions of that. For the Banner Spear, they have a perk where if you select this one, anytime you open a door, you get to add three to your move. And as a tanky character, that's something that makes a whole lot of sense because you're often the one that people say, hey, we need to open this door. We don't want to have, you know, the spell weaver do it. Let's have our tank do it. And in Frosthaven, they really built a way that you can really lean into something like that, like I said. Gives you additional movement so that you can either move further into the room and maybe get something done, or perhaps get your butt out of the room if it's really, really dangerous in some way. Beyond just improving this perk system, they also added a whole new element called Masteries. Masteries are another way to gain perks for your class, instead of just using the normal checks that you get through battle goals. For a Mastery, you have to do something that's really complicated that shows you really know how to get the most out of your class. I'm going to go back to the Banner Spear again, just because it's the class that I had the most uh, experience with. One of the specialties of the Banner Spear were the formation attacks, where you could attack multiple enemies with a single attack action. Um, sometimes three, maybe four, in some cases even up to, I think, six, or actually the level nine card had a crazy number, but I never saw that. In any case, one of the masteries that you had available to you as a Banner Spear is that you had to do three different formation attacks where you were able to attack three enemies at the same time. It's simple enough, but hard to do. You need to have the right formations available to even do it, and it's something that is accomplishable if you focus on it, and it was something I was able to do. And I really felt good when I was able to accomplish it because it was something that I tried for a long time. I would get one, and then I would get two where I got three enemies, and then I just couldn't quite get that third one, but eventually I did. So it was really rewarding, and again, it's another way to get a perk, a nice little addition to this part of the characters. The last thing I'm going to talk about in relation to characters in Frosthaven, which I think is a huge improvement over Gloomhaven, and I think it was hard to make such a huge improvement in this respect. I've already mentioned that there are a lot of different types of characters in Gloomhaven. There's a lot of variety there. There are summoning classes, there are ranged classes, there were, um, you know, melee classes, and all of them played in little different ways and had to, you know, go about their business a little bit differently. But this variety in Frosthaven has gone to a way different level, in my opinion. Now, I've only played three characters personally, um, but I do play in a party of four. And at this point, I've probably seen maybe 10 different characters played. And I'm always blown away by how different new characters can be. The different things that they do are like completely reimagined from other characters. 
there's very little that is like samey samey um it's not like there's oh four different flavors of tank and they do slightly different things or there's three different versions of magic user and they do slightly different things it's more like holy reimaginings of how you might play a character in Frosthaven. Um, I would love to give you more details, but I don't want to spoil anything for this. But there's a particular class I'm thinking of when I think of this, which is the Shackles Lock class. So if you get a chance to play and you get that one unlocked, I think you're in for a treat. It's a really different way of thinking about how you play the game of Frosthaven. And that's, that's not the only class that does that. Uh, the Trap class does that. Um, the Meteor class does that. They all have very different ways of playing that are really refreshing. And it's great when you move from one character and you get to go to a completely different, completely different way to play the game. It's really rewarding. And I love that about Frosthaven. So there you have it. Those are my top five improvements in Frosthaven over Gloomhaven. If you couldn't tell from the context of these five different things, I really love Frosthaven. I mean, heck, if you can't tell by the fact that most of my content is Frosthaven related, I must enjoy this game, and I definitely do. It's the most fun I've ever had with a board game. Uh, it's worth every dollar that I've spent on it. I do think that it's not for everyone. I'm not going to say that everyone should buy this game, because it does require commitment. But it's really great. I've had a great time with it, and I look forward to it every single week. So before I get out of here, and before you hit that like and subscribe button over there, I'm going to leave you with an honorable mention. You might not have known this, but the box for Frosthaven closes itself.